welcome to my class so today we will be studying about energy state of water in soil in fact this topic is very important to understand the dynamics of soil water supposing that in a soil we have three points C Now, if I ask this question, whether this water will move from A to C or A to B or B to C, everybody will say yes, it will move from A to C. Some will say it will move from A to C. Somebody will say it will move from A to B. That means in the downward direction. But this may not be true because. What if we may move from C to A? Even if we move from B to A, it may move from C to A. So it can move in any direction. And you know that uh, for anything to move, it moves from a state of higher energy to a state of lower energy. This is a simple question. That whether water will move from A to C or from C to A, it will depend upon. Its energy level. If energy level is higher at A, it's lower at C. Water will move from A to C. Or if energy level at C is higher than B, then water will move from C to B. Now we have to see that how to determine the energy level of water in the soil. For this, I will simply say, let us assume that we have a water. In a container, not only water. I should say it is pure water. Pure water means without any salts. So this water does not contain any salt. And even we have to assume that this water is free. It's not being attracted by any force of attraction. So you will see that the molecules of the wall of container they are attracting the molecules of water. But here we assume that no, the molecules of water are not being attracted by the molecules of the wall of the container. So if this is free water, so its energy level will be highest. I should say its energy level is. Maximum, maximum energy. Now, when you transform this water from this container to the soil, so what will happen in the soil now? We have soil particles like this. We have soil particles, soil holes like that. So, if I try to depict this in a real, that these are soil solids, and when this water is transformed into the soil, so first of all, this water will get attracted by the soil solids. So, what we call as adsorption. So water will be absorbed on the surface of soil solids through water vapor forces of attraction. Similarly, the water will be attracted over here. Now, with time, these films will go on thickening, and ultimately, the water will be filled in soil pores. <laughs> So we call this as absorption. In fact, you cannot separate these two: adsorption and absorption. So basically, in any soil, you will have soil solids, you have soil pores. So water will be absorbed, absorbed as well as absorbed. In micro pores, water will on they they always are water filled pores. So <coughs> since you cannot. Separate these two terms. We will give it a name: sorption.
and at the same time, this is your soil matrix. Now, <coughs> you know the energy, energy is of two types. As I said that, it's, it depends upon the level of the energy of water. So this energy would be kinetic energy. This would be now kinetic energy one half and k. The velocity of water in the soil is very very slow. Very very slow. So if this is 0 0.01 meter per second, so when you square it, it will become 0 0.001. So <coughs> what we do is that we ignore. This. Because then kinetic energy will be still smaller. So, the kinetic energy of water in the soil is negligible. Otherwise, kinetic energy of water flowing in a stream or river is very high. And you know, using that kinetic energy, we are producing electricity also. But in soil, this kinetic energy is negligible. So, only form of energy a dominant in the soil is here, potential energy. That means position of water in the soil. Now, <coughs> as I said that, when you transform this water, which is contained in the container and has maximum free energy, because this is free water, when this is transformed in the soil, the soil solid, soil particles, they attract this water to, towards them. So, what will happen to free energy? Free energy of water will decrease. We call this as soil magic potential. So, what is now soil magic potential? We denote it by the psi n. Now, if I have to define now soil what magic potential, now it is simply the force with which Water is held by the soil solids. Very simple definition. The force with which water is held by the soil solids. And the availability of this water to the plants will depend upon the severity of the force, the bottom of the force. If it is held with a greater force, it will be less available or it may not be available to the plants. Vice versa, if it's held with a smaller force, it will be available to the plants. So, this magic potential is always negative. Why? Because it has decreased the free energy. Psi magic potential is negative because it decreases the free energy of so this is one force now, one energy level, which is acting on the water present in the soil. See if this is point A. Second is <coughs> when this water is transformed into the soil over this point A, you know, another force will act upon it, and that will be the force which acts on every type of matter, that is the force of gravity, which will try to pull it down. Now, <coughs> the question is, uh, so that force of gravity acts on this water and it has a tendency to make the water move in downward direction, vertically downward direction. We call this as soil gravitational now the question is whether its uh, uh, value will be negative or positive or neutral. It depends upon where this point, refers, uh, the reference level with which you compare is. Now in general I should say the force of gravity, you know it's determined, it's there by center of the gravity. That, that, that may be thousands or millions of miles away from say this point. So what we do is that we simply take a reference level. Now say it is 0, 5, 10, 
Okay, because this point is present at A point is at surface. Now I take reference level at the surface. Now if I say another point is over here B, one is A, so gravitational potential at A will be from reference level it is at 5 centimeters, so it will be minus 5. Similarly, gravitational potential at B will be minus 15 centimeters. Now, the difference in gravitational potential, because now the force will be the difference in the gravitational potential between two points A and B. So, this will be now gravitational potential at A minus 5 minus Gravitational potential at B minus 15. So this will be minus 5 plus 15. This will be 10. This is the value we are concerned with. The difference of gravitational potential between point A and point B. Now supposing that somebody says no. I will not take reference level at A. I will take reference level at B. This is my reference level. Now, what will be the gravitational potential at A? A is here. So, reference level is here. So, you are 10 cm above the reference level. So, this will be plus 10. Right? B, no, B point is at the reference level itself. So, that means 0. So, this will become Now, 10. Here, it will be 10. Minus 0. So 10 minus 0 means 10. Very simple. So doesn't matter wherever you take the reference level, whatever point you select as reference level, this difference in gravitational potential will remain same. So if I say that this gravitational potential can be, it can be negative, it can be positive, it can be 0. <coughs> It depends upon the reference level. So this another force which is acting on our water present in the soil. Now you know every soil has some type of nutrients, chemicals, maybe dissolved present in the soil. So say solutes are here. And if some salts are here, some salts are here, some salts are at point C. And when water comes, even just like soil solids, the solutes also tend to attract the water molecules. And we call this as osmotic or you can say solute potential. And we this denote this by uh, S, solute potential. So now they are acting three forces. One is amount of salt. And if amount of salt at A and B and C is same, then it means this osmotic potential will become meaningless. You need not take this uh, osmotic potential. But if there is difference of the concentration of salts at A or B or C, then this becomes an important component of energy level of water. Then even this uh, 0 to 5 centimeter layer may have temperature different from that of 10 to 15 or 15 to 20 centimeter layer. This difference in temperature will also try to influence the energy level. We call this as thermal potential. But generally we assume that the thermal potential in the soil is meaningless. The temperature more or less is same throughout the soil profile. So it may not affect, you know, the energy state of water. So anyhow, now there are four forces acting on. One, two, three, four. Four forces are acting on the water which is transformed from this maximum free energy level to the soil. So, 
that means the net total soil water potential. This will be equal to magic potential plus gravitational potential plus solute potential plus thermal potential. It could be some other problem. Some other unknown things. Now, if the soil is saturated, all the pores are filled with water, then this magic potential, it will become pressure potential. Because magnetic potential is negative pressure potential. This becomes positive pressure potential because all the pores are filled with water. So, water moves freely into the soil. So, <coughs> anyhow, this is total soil water potential. If total soil water potential at A is higher than total soil water potential at B, water will move from A to B. Similarly, if total soil water potential at C is higher than total soil water potential at B, water will move from C to B, though C is at the lower point. So this, in fact, this is the energy level of soil water in the soil, which determines in which direction and how fast the water will move the soil. So, <coughs> if I say that total soil water potential at A minus total soil water potential at B, so this will be different thing. Total soil water potential. So if if I am not defining this total soil water potential, what will be its definition now? One definition is very clear. Soil water potential. So this is now simply the energy state of water in the soil. That is called total soil water potential. Very simple definition. Energy state of water present in the soil. And this energy state of water depends upon soil solids, magnetic potential, it depends upon the amount of solutes present, it depends upon, uh, you know. The temperature of the layer in which water is present. So all these components they affect the energy state of water. If you have to go a bit deep to the definition, then you can simply say what we do over here. This is the energy used to transform a small quantity of water. I will I will go on. Energy used to, I should say, translocate an infinite quantity of water, infinite, instead of infinite, let us make it a simple, a small quantity of water. From a pool of water with three maximum energy to the point in question in the soil. So this is, the, you know, what the definition is contained in the books. A simple definition is the energy state of water present in the soil during a particular time at a different stage. You, you depend upon, you now when I say soil magnetic potential, it will depend upon whether your soil is coarse textured or fine textured. So let us see how it will affect. So this magnetic potential. This will be higher or lower in coarse texture. It will be higher in 
R means more negative. I should better uh, write over here more negative. I a fine textured soil than a coarse textured soil. Why? Because fine textured soils they have more you know, net charge, negative positive charge. They have, uh, you know, more force of attraction for the water molecules, which are bipolar in nature, than coarse texture soil. So, if I say that, say, you have a fine texture soil, and you have coarse texture soil, and you have 10% moisture over here, soil water content. And similarly, you have over here also you have 10 percent soil water content. Now, same amount of water in two types of soils. Still, this water in coarse textured soils may be available to the plants, but this same amount of water in fine textured soils may not be available to the plants. The reason being, this 10 percent moisture is held with a greater force. Here, the magic potential is higher. And when I say R means more negative. So in fine texture soils, water is held with a greater force than in coarse texture soils. And we measure this with the help of you know potentiometer. This is essentially a, a simple, you know, device. It is a PVC tube. It is attracted with, you know, a ceramic cup, porous ceramic cup. And here it is, uh, you know, it is attracted, attached to it in heat. So it depends on, you know, now when you place this tensiometer in the soil, at the depth where you want to measure the magic potential, what will happen that the water which is filled in this system, this whole system is filled with water, so this is water and your system is air tight. So when you fill this with water, what happens that it will try the water inside the tensiometer, it will try to come in equilibrium with the in the water in the surrounding soil. So water will try to come out if your soil becomes dry. Then it becomes in equilibrium between you know the moisture content in the tensiometer and the the moisture in the surrounding soil. So, if this water comes out, system is here tight, a vacuum will be created inside the tension meter. And this vacuum is created over here. That's why we call this as vacuum gauge. So, this is in, this gives the value in kilopascal or even in centimeter. So, you can simply measure the way, uh, you know, the negative pressure potential and that is nothing but the magic potential. So whatever the reading you get over here, that will be magic potential. That will show us whether this water is available to the plants or not. Now supposing we say that uh, point 0.1 to point 0.3 bar. This is field capacity moisture content. This is the ideal moisture content which plants can easily take up on the soil. So if this reading is between 0.1 and 0.3 bar, so you need not worry, okay, water is being taken up by the plants for their benefit. If the soil dries to 15 bar, we had already studied that in permanent wilting point, then this shows that uh, your moisture in the soil is dried to some to such an extent that the plants they will permanent. Now <coughs> 
One thing is clear that soil water content is not a good availability, uh, sorry, good indicator of plant water availability. Because as I, I gave you an example that same 10% water in coarse texture soil as well as fine texture soil, it may or may not be available to the plants depending upon the type of soil, depending upon the texture of the soil. But when you talk of soil metal potential, this exactly gives you the availability. So whether it is fine textured or coarse textured soil doesn't matter. What we did that <coughs> we exploited this uh, you know soil battery potential you know, property of soil water to schedule irrigation to rice. So what we did that we did, took different values of soil water potential. Say soil water potential of sorry, soil metric potential of soil water potential. We took uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 300, 0 to the power. Or in other words, I should say 100, 150, 200, 250, 300 centimeters of soil metric potential. We carried out that these experiments. Before that, we tried to find out what is the optimum depth at which we should measure this uh, potential. And we came out that the depth would be 15 centimeters. So we installed these tension meters at 15 centimeters and we had irrigation treatment 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five irrigation treatments were imposed. Then we came out that. This is the best irrigation treatment because if you increase the soil metric potential to 200, and of course, these are all values of minus 200, then there was slight decrease in the yield of the crop. At 250, the uh, you know decrease in yield increased. So, this was the best value where we had minimum amount of water applied to the fields. And at the same time, there was no effect of the crop yield. Now, the next question was we carried out these experiments with gauge type of tension meter. But then the gauge type of tension meter visibility was not there first because the farmer was illiterate. He, he could not read that, okay, this is the reading and should I irrigate or should I not irrigate. Secondly, the gauges uh, they were not sturdy enough. Sometimes they got broken in the field and damaged in the field. So this came to our mind that why not to remove the gauge, eliminate the gauge properly. So then the idea came to our mind that <coughs> let me have a two tube system of tensiometer. We modified the tensiometer. This is the ceramic cup, outer tubing. Then we have inner tube which is connected to the ceramic cup. And this is the silicon core. Silicon core issues, you know, uh, the air tightness of this system. So what we do is that uh, before preparing this tensiometer for using in the field, we keep it in a bucket filled with water and then water rises to this ceramic cup. So that means this cup should be saturated because if cup is not saturated, some air remains in the pores of the cup, then this is, uh, this is going to create an error. So when water rises through the process of capillarity, the air is pushed out and you have to keep this cork removed. <coughs> so you keep this uh, as such overnight. Next day, the water might be rising up to the level of water in the bucket. And later on, you can fill the rest of the tube <coughs> with water slowly. So both the tubes are filled with water. After filling the water, you put it put on the cork. Then <coughs> you have to install it in the field. We have put this, you know, sign over here. You have to install this is uh, 15 centimeter depth from the center of the cup. So once you install in the field, you know, this uh, water in the cup will try to come in equilibrium with the outer world, you know. And once that is done, there will be fall in water level in the inner tube. And what we have done, we have given the color coding. You can see green, yellow and red. So what we recommend to the farmers that every day in the morning you should come and see the level of water in the inner tube. 
if that level is <coughs> within green zone, we recommend not to irrigate the field. Even if your soil looks to be dry. If it crosses the green zone, enters the yellow, he should irrigate. But he should never allow the water level to come in the red zone. So very simple. We got this tensionmeter patented. We have a patent for this tensionmeter. This is being used by the farmers. I should not say not all the farmers, but very progressive farmers who use this tensionmeter for distributing irrigation to the crops. We are now working for wheat also. So this is how I should say this is direct application of soil physics to the field. So this is field application of soil physics. What we said over here, soil magic potential. Since it may is soil matrix potential, this directly gives us the availability of water to the plants. So, <coughs> and uh, gravitational potential measurement, because these are in fact the two very important components. We assume that uh, you don't have a difference in solutes in the soil profile, you don't have difference in the temperatures. So, you, only two things are left. One is magnetic water potential, second is gravitation. Gravitational you can select, uh, I mean calculate. And if I said that if you have a saturated soil and then you are measuring uh, this potential, it will not be magnetic potential, it will be pressure potential. And for measuring the pressure potential, we have this different uh, simple, uh, you can say, equipment, what we call as a PVC tube, which is perforated. When you install it in the soil, this is perforated tube, perforated on all sides. So, because soil is saturated, saturated soil, so water enters the tube into the system, it rises, and this, will, this water level gives us the pressure potential. And this instrument is called so basically the piezometer. They give us an indication of the water table of the soil, and we use these piezometers to find out the level of groundwater or water table. Now, as I said, that the movement of water in the soil, which we will study in our forthcoming lectures, it depends upon the total soil water potential psi e. <coughs> so, uh, supposing that its value is 3000 centimeter minus 3 And instead of having a bigger, you know, magnitude of the value, we take simply negative log of soil water potential. So, this becomes the F. That means PF of this 3000 centimeter, it comes to be, say if it is 3000, it comes to be about 1 point something, or something, I don't know exactly, you can see that. So, on the other hand, as I said that soil, Magnetic potential. This is always a negative value. So say it is minus 300 centimeters. Sometimes you don't want to use minus every time because I said uh, you forget that it, this is a negative term. So then if you don't want to say 300 centimeters, you write simply 300 centimeters. And this will be soil magnetic suction or soil magnetic tension. So basically, whether you take tension, suction, or potential, it means one and the same thing. The only difference is when you use the word potential, you have to mention the negative sign. If you don't want to have the negative sign, you are saying suction tension, then you can simply write plus value here. Yeah. So. Now, after this, what are the units of 
soil was potential. Now, to find out the unit, we can express the soil water potential in three ways. One is soil water potential per unit of volume. So, soil water potential is nothing but potential energy, MGA, divided by volume is your mass over density. Density of water, of course. So, mass is your temperature. So, this will be density of water times G times F. So, this will be Newton plus K Newton. We also call this as Pascal. Pascals, kilopascals, whatever. Then soil water potential per unit of mass on mass basis. So it will be again MGH divided by so this will be now simply H. So you call it as joule per kg. Then soil water potential on you know wave basis. When we say wave. So it will be potential energy divided by mass into G equals of gravity. So these two are drawn will be on the edge. So this will be the centimeter. So generally we use this uh, value of you know suction head or tension head or potential in terms of centimeters of water volume or centimeters of the mercury volume. So this is how uh, we define the units of soil water potential. I hope the things are clear and uh, next uh, we will be using this soil water potential in our soil water lectures. Thank you very much.